From what I saw on TV and rap videos when I used to listen to rap, I thought that girls from the hood were tough, no-nonsense types who demanded and got respect. I thought that they tolerated no BS from their boyfriends and no disrespect for males. They had this image of being the type of girls you did not want to mess with. What a surprise to find out that some of them didn't live up to that image. mentioned in other videos I got to see a bit of the hood because hood rats moved next door to me but acted like they still lived in the hood. During that time I heard hood rat girls getting beaten by their boyfriends. The first young hood rat couple that lived next door didn't seem to start out abusive. One night they had a fight and the hood rat girl must have hit the hood rat guy and left. I heard him getting mad and saying, where's my mother when I need her? Where's my mother when I need her? He just kept repeating that. It seemed that he didn't hit her back, but was angry that she hit him and wanted his mother there to deal with the girl. I'm not sure what happened, but all of a sudden they started getting into physical fights and he hit her back. One time he beat her so bad that his own family came over and scolded him. I heard all this from my apartment. They told him that he didn't need to beat her like that. They stayed together, the couple stayed together, and had more physical fights until it seemed that she couldn't take it anymore and threatened to leave him. From then on, each time they got into a fight and it was about to get physical, he would leave and they would talk over the phone. Or she would threaten to go home, then he would block the door and try to convince her to stay, but he didn't hit her. They stayed together and they moved out before I did. Another hood rat couple lived across the hall during the same time. They were older, maybe in their 30s. They got into an argument one night and she was being the usual unnecessarily loud hood rat girl who wants to get attention by humiliating someone else. Either she told him to get out or he left and went downstairs. She, he was talking to someone on the phone in the carport. My apartment was above the carport, so unfortunately, I had to hear bits of his conversation. I heard him tell the other person I would hit her, but she would call the cops on me. He said it so matter-of-factly that I was shocked. He wasn't scared that someone would hear him and wasn't ashamed. I never heard anyone say something like that as if it was normal. That hood rat girl was the only one that didn't seem to tolerate abuse. It was interesting, though, that a hood rat guy admitted he would hit a girl if he could get away with it. A hood rat girl moved upstairs when the younger hood rats still lived there, and she seemed to be around the same age as the older couple just mentioned. I mentioned the ages to show that age doesn't seem to matter because hood rats act ignorant at any age. Her apartment was above the young hood rat couple next door, but when she had physical fights with her boyfriend, I could clearly hear it in my apartment. All you heard was banging, screaming, and things being thrown, including people. During one of their many fights, the reason why they fought became more clear. He had supported her when she was down and she lived with him. Once she got on her feet, she moved out and didn't want to be with him anymore. He obviously still wanted to be with her and resented that she left him. She obviously didn't want to be with him anymore, but he wouldn't accept that, so he fought her. Once, he threw her things out of her third-story window during their fight. The police came by almost every week because of them. She eventually moved out. After that, the hood rat couple who trapped and beat the boy up moved in. They were a nightmare from the beginning, as I mentioned in the video about that traumatic incident. 
He threw tantrums, told her to shut up, and broke things in the apartment. Once she was irritable and whined that it was because she had her period, he told her to shut up and he didn't care if she had her period. Like, he was just so cold and sensitive. Another time, the cops were called and she said that he choked her. He put her down and was just mean and cold to her. He treated her like she was a nuisance. Um, there were also there were also mixed hood rat couples where only one person was a hood rat and the other was a different ethnicity, but it didn't seem that they were as violent towards each other um, as the two hood rat couples or a hood rat with a mixed hood rat. Um, that doesn't mean that the mixed hood rat couples, where one's a hood rat and one's a different ethnicity, it doesn't mean that they didn't fight. It means that it wasn't as vicious. I don't know why that was. Remember that I didn't live in the hood. These were only hood rats that moved in. Um, I was kind of getting a sneak peek into some things that hood rats do. So why am I telling you this? It's to point out that the image of hood rat females in the media probably doesn't match the reality. The hood rat female is shown as this tough as nails, take no prisoners, allow no disrespect survivor. I would never have guessed that they would tolerate the behavior that I observed. I could have dismissed the first young couple as an exception, but as you can see, it happened with more than one couple and across ages. The problem is that hood rat females are trending. Young girls actually look up to them and imitate them. Is that a good thing? Are hood rat females good role models? I don't think so. A lot of hood rat females are broken, hurt, and have not dealt with the abuse or trauma they probably face. A lot of them have even accepted being objectified, mistreated, abused, and cheated on as a norm. They tolerate, accept, and even expect guys to behave inappropriately towards them. Some even internalize these bad things and consider it a way of life. I don't think these are the type of females young girls should look up to. They're not even warning young girls to learn from their mistakes or stay away from these bad guys. They actually talk about it as if it was normal, and some of them say that they prefer these types of relationships. They don't come out and say it like that, but they say things like they like or need a guy who is hood or street. It's no wonder that a lot of young girls today seek to be hypersexual and hypersexualized. They objectify themselves and accept being objectified. There is nothing wrong with being sexy as long as you're comfortable with what you're doing, but it doesn't feel as if most of these girls are owning their sexuality. It seems as if they are doing it out of desperation for attention and acceptance. It's not only the hood rats making this more acceptable, but with the popularity of hood or street culture so high, you have to wonder how much they are contributing to the downfall of the modern female. Why is the hood rat girl hypersexual? I used to listen to rap before it got so misogynistic and slutty. A couple of hit rap videos showed a club that happened to be located in NYC. Of course, my friends and I wanted to go there so that we could say we went to the club in the videos. We were underage, but that didn't matter. Someone we knew found out where the club was and said we should go there during their rap or hip hop night. We did. It was exciting to go to the same club as in the rap videos, but we were in for a surprise. The whole feel of the place was different from what we were used to. It wasn't my first time in a club, but I felt out of place. 
there was a predominantly black crowd, but they were different. At that time, I had no idea hood rats existed. It was like a different world. Neither I nor the girl that came with me said anything at first, but after a while, we admitted that it didn't feel right to be there. We tried to enjoy the night because we already paid to get in. We found an area away from the crowd and hung out there. A guy came by and she told me that he kept staring at me. She also said that he was cute. I couldn't really tell with all the strobe lights, but took her word for it. He wouldn't approach me, so to kind of show off how bold I was, I went over and started to talk to him. He was quiet and didn't say much, so I started to dance. I danced in front of him, but he just stared and didn't dance with me. I could tell he liked watching me dance, so I kept dancing and talking to him. He never touched me. After a song or two, he pointed at me, then to himself, and started to thrust to the song. I was disgusted, pushed him away even though he wasn't touching me, and walked away. I felt so disrespected. I went over to the girl who came to the club with me, and we both shunned him. He walked away, and we talked about how rude he was. We went downstairs to see what was going on and ran into some girls who went to our school. These were well-to-do black girls, and they had the same out-of-place look as we did. We were all from the burbs, and this crowd was something new. They admitted that it wasn't their crowd either, and we all laughed. They said they were leaving. We decided to stick around for a little while before leaving. While watching this unusual crowd, I spotted the perv from upstairs. Another girl was dancing in front of him while he just stood there again. This time, it was different. This girl was throwing herself at him. She was rubbing up on him and dancing really slutty. I think he even touched her behind at one point. She was really aggressive and he was pulling away, but she was on top of him. I had never seen a girl behave like that. She was actually making him uncomfortable. Then I noticed that most of the other girls were acting just as slutty. My friend and I looked at each other, shook our heads, and started talking about them. I said I guess it wasn't me, and that was what he was used to. I watched her throw herself at him while he tried to get away. He met his match. I watched until a fight broke out, the bouncers stepped in right away, and it was like a tornado of bouncers came and took whoever was fighting away before anything else happened. We were shaken up by that and decided to leave right away. Neither one of us knew what to make of what we saw or the type of crowd that we just encountered, but we didn't want to go back to that club on hip hop night anymore. We didn't really want to go back there at all. It wasn't a bad club, but that crowd threw us off. It is only now that I realized that was a hood rat crowd. In the burbs, we only saw people from the ghetto or projects. Some of them acted ignorant, but that club crowd was worse than anything we had ever seen. The main point of sharing our story was to talk about how that guy thought it was okay to act so sexual to a girl he just met, and then how that hood rat girl threw herself at him in a hypersexual way. In recent years, when I was stuck in the racist community, I overheard one girl with hood rat tendencies complain about a guy who didn't let a girl know he was interested in the right way. She said something like, he didn't touch your butt or nothing? <laughs> As if that was a requirement to show interest towards a girl. Where I'm from, it was inappropriate for a guy to show interest in a girl by touching her behind, and he could get in a lot of trouble for doing that. Why did these hood rat girls think that it was okay to have guys they just met touch their butt or act hypersexual towards them? I'm not saying that all girls who grew up in the hood act this way. I am talking about the hood rats that I observed or interacted with in the racist community. I wonder if it's because some hood rat girls start having sex at a young age, even in elementary school. 
The negative side effect of having sex so young is that you don't get a chance to discover or own your own body. Kids in elementary school shouldn't, should not be sexually sharing their bodies with other kids. They should not be sexually sharing their bodies with other kids. Some hood rat girls were also sexually abused and haven't dealt with it. If sexual abuse or assault is common in the hood, then hood rat girls won't see anything wrong with it. They will think it is the norm and even promote that type of environment. Kind of like what I watched at the club. The only people who seemed to be appalled by what was going on was me and the other suburban girls. Everyone else acted as if it was completely normal. I guess that most hood rat girls are broken girls who haven't really dealt with their issues because they think it is normal or they don't know how to deal with it. If that is true, then should the hood rat girl be viewed as someone other girls should imitate? Again, that is what is currently happening. The entertainment industry is constantly showing these images of hypersexual females from the hood who are proud to be promiscuous and in dysfunctional relationships. They're proud to be in these dysfunctional relationships and it all feels so wrong. Another thing I notice is some females who were sexually abused or assaulted respond by becoming hypersexual. Some feel it is their way of taking back their sexuality and reclaiming their bodies. I think that they are doing harm to themselves in two ways. One is that they are probably having sex when they don't really want to. After sexual abuse, their bodies may not be ready to have so much sex. If the sexual abuse or assault is not dealt with, in a constructive manner, then the body and mind doesn't really recover. Becoming promiscuous after sexual abuse or assault is destructive and not empowering. The victim's body could feel that it is still being used, but this time with the victim's own permission. That is even worse because the body could feel as if it is not worthy of respect and it is having sex out of force again, but this time a willing force bent in the wrong direction. The second way that promiscuity after sexual abuse or assault is harmful is that the female could get a reputation as a whore. The rapist probably denied the rape and said that the female consented. He may have gone further and said the victim sleeps around. If she becomes promiscuous, then he can point that out, say he was right, and that he didn't rape her. If you ever become a victim of sexual assault or abuse, and I hope you don't, please don't become promiscuous in an attempt to fix what happened or reclaim your sexuality. Get counseling or find some other way to deal with the trauma and make sure you are okay before having sexual relationships again. Going back to the hood rat female, what is her appeal? Is it the image of a strong woman? I have yet to meet a hood rat female who was a strong woman. A lot of hood rat females talk the strong woman talk, but I haven't seen one walk the walk. I wonder if hood rat girls have become promiscuous because of sexual abuse, because of sexual abuse or assault. I wonder why they normalize being objectified. I have no answers. But I want females to think twice before imitating or adopting the same attitudes that hood rat females have towards themselves, relationship, and sex. The hood rat female shouldn't be a role model, but a cautionary tale.